Uh, that's my chair, bro. No big deal, just trying to update the people on the state of Louisville. If there's anything more reliable than Thirsty Thursdays at the Granville Inn, perhaps it's Carly Jones, who is henceforth known as Carly <laughs> Jones. It's truly difficult to envision where Louisville would be without Jones this season, and this week he gave an unreal effort for the cards. At Wake Forest, Jones poured in 23 points, grabbed 10 rebounds, and dished out three dimes. At Miami, Jones put the team on his back, dropping 25 points and three assists. The thing I love most about Jones right now is he's still manifesting success at the next level. Most grad transfers come in and take a massive step down, but not Jones. He's playing more minutes, taking more shots at Louisville than he did at Radford, while still averaging more than a 2-to-1 assist-to-turnover ratio. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum is Samuel Williamson, who has been as dangerous and unpredictable as the Gene Snyder during rush hour. Chris Mack said he had a conversation with Sam about a week ago, and their heart-to-heart -heart really freed him up. Williamson scored 15 points and grabbed 11 boards on Wednesday, but then, on Saturday, Williamson was lost again. UofL needs Williamson to be that third guy that steps up, and having him be on fire one game and then a no-show the next is almost worse than just getting a bland 7-5 and five on a consistent basis. If you do want to see someone stepping up more consistently, look no further than what Jalen Withers is doing. If this guy isn't in foul trouble, he's more entertaining than single mom six lilies deep at Downs After Dark. Withers was in his bag from start to finish on Saturday in Coral Gables. He finished with 18 points and 11 boards in only 28 minutes. More importantly, Withers is starting to have some oh shit moments where you start to realize what kind of potential he really has. And as for that loss to Miami, does it suck? Hell yeah, it does. But my take is that every team has down games and off shooting nights. If the cards are even okay from deep on Saturday, we're praising them for overcoming a 15-point deficit in the second half. Instead, a tough matchup with a Miami squad that was red hot throughout resulted in a loss that will serve as a learning tool. Now with everything that's going on in the city right now, we haven't even got a chance to talk about Louisville women's basketball. That's on me. The talk of the season has been the return of reigning ACC Player of the Year Dana Evans and sensational freshman Haley Van Lith. Wolves is a school that has had teams that featured the likes of Angel McCautry, Shoney Schimmel, Aisha Durr, but I don't think you get any arguments that this isn't the best backcourt in school history. Evans may be on pace for National Player of the Year honors, averaging 19 points and 4 assists in only 28 minutes per game. Her backcourt mate, Van Lith, has, been, has more than lived up to the hype. Van Lith is averaging 13 points, 6 boards, and 2 assists per game, and gets better every single game. Now, while Van Lith deserves all the praise she's been getting, let's not forget about forward Olivia Cochran. In only 20 minutes a game, Cochran is averaging nearly 13 points and 7 boards. The freshman All-American is the next big thing for the cards. Elsewhere, Louisville is seeing a significant step up in play all over the floor. Cal transfer Kiana Smith is an absolute stud. She is shooting better than 41% from beyond the arc and dropping 13 points, 2.6 assists, and grabbing 4 boards a game in only 25 minutes. This team is so balanced and so dangerous across the board. From the Elizabeths, Dixon and Balagoon, to Narika Kono, Alana Smith, Louisville is outscoring its opponents by 26.5 points per game and making great teams look silly. In fact, Louisville just stepped up and became the number one team in the AP poll for the first time in school history. Jeff Walls' team is the hottest ticket in town right now, and if you're looking to get out of the house during all this madness, maybe go to a Louisville women's game. It's actually pretty cheap. On Saturday night, between the Louisville Shocker and Lamar Jackson getting knocked out of the playoffs, I felt like Ron Burgundy when Jack Black punted Baxter off the bridge. I was just in a glass case of emotions, man. Anyways, while I was busy being down in the dumps, the actual professionals were actually handling things with total grace. Although Jackson was concussed in the middle of the night in unspeakably frigid temperatures, he made sure to go out of his way to say hi to some of the fans of the Buffalo Airport and sign some autographs. Speaking of the Buffalo Bills and Bills Mafia, if you aren't hopping on the Bills Mafia train for the rest of the playoffs, you're missing out on being a part of the most incredible story. When Jackson was knocked out of the game early in the fourth quarter, Bills fans on Reddit jumped at the opportunity to show Jackson some love during a difficult time. One Redditor found Lamar's favorite charity, which so happened to be Blessings in a Backpack in Louisville. The crazy part about this is not that it's just a few random acts of kindness. It's the fact that a bunch of Bills fans in Orchard Park, New York, decided to gather together and collect money for a city that has no impact on them. Within 24 hours, Blessings in a Backpack in Louisville had received almost $300,000. This money will go to feed over 2,300 students over the course of the school year. If you take nothing else from this past week, let it be this, my favorite lesson from Tony Dungy. Things will go wrong at times. You can't always control your circumstances. However, you can always control your attitude, approach, and response. Your options are to complain or look ahead to the future.